Welcome to Math with Mr. J. In this video, I'm going to cover how to read or interpret a line plot involving fourths, and then also how to create a line plot involving fourths. We will start with interpreting a line plot and then move on to creating a line plot. Now remember, a line plot is a type of graph that displays data along a number line. We use X's above the number line to show the number of times something occurs. Basically, line plots help us organize and present data. Let's jump into our first example where we have a line plot and then we have four questions to see if we can read and understand the line plot. For our example, it says, Sophia has a toy animal collection. She measured the length of each toy animal to the nearest fourth inch and created a line plot to display their lengths. Now looking at the line plot, we have a title up top. That tells us what the line plot is about, what it is showing us. We have lengths of Sophia's toy animals. Then we have the number line. For this example, the number line starts at five and goes up to seven. The number line here counts up by fourths. So we have five, five and one fourth, five and a half, five and three fourths, six, so on and so forth, up to again, seven. And then underneath the line plot, underneath the number line, we have inches. That's our unit of measure. That tells us that the numbers on the number line represent inches. Then each X represents a toy animal. For example, if we look at seven, seven inches, we have two X's above that. That means that two toy animals measured seven inches. Let's jump into our questions now, starting with number one, where we have, how many toy animals are in Sophia's collection? So for this, we need to see how many total X's are included on the line plot. Each X represents a toy animal. So we need to count all of the toy animals. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So how many toy animals are in Sophia's collection? She has 13 toy animals. Moving on to number two, we have, what was the length of the longest toy animal? Well, we need to look for the greatest number on the number line with at least one X above it. That's going to be seven, seven inches. That's going to be the length of the longest toy animal. And there are actually two animals that measured seven inches. So the length of the longest toy animal, seven inches. Moving on to number three, how many toy animals were longer than six inches? So let's find six inches first, which is right here. And we need all of the toy animals that were longer, that were more than six inches. That means all of the toy animals that are six and a quarter inches, six and a half inches, six and three quarter inches, and seven inches. So we need to count all of the X's to the right of six, six inches. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there were seven toy animals longer than six inches. Lastly, let's move on to number four, where we have, what was the most common length? In other words, which length occurred the most number of times? Well, let's start at the left end of the number line and work our way right. Five inches occurred zero times. Five and a quarter inches occurred once. Five and a half inches occurred three times. Five and three quarters inches occurred once. Six inches occurred once. Six and a quarter inches occurred twice. Six and a half inches occurred three times. Six and three quarters inches occurred zero times. And then seven inches occurred twice. 
So it looks like we have a tie here, five and a half inches and six and a half inches. Those both occurred three times. So Sophia has three toy animals that are five and a half inches and three toy animals that are six and a half inches. So for number four, again, we have two lengths. So what were the most common lengths? Five and a half inches and six and a half inches. So there's how to read and understand a line plot. Let's move on to creating a line plot. Now let's take a look at creating a line plot. Let's jump into our example where we have a zoo has some new baby turtles. A zoologist measured the length of each baby turtle to the nearest fourth inch. Create a line plot to display their lengths. So here are the lengths of the baby turtles to the nearest fourth inch. Now when creating a line plot, the first thing that we may need to do is organize the data, the numbers we are working with. You may be working with data that is already organized, maybe in a table, ordered from least to greatest, or whatever the case may be. If your data is already organized, then you can skip this step. It's already done. For this example, the data isn't organized. We just have a list of numbers in no particular order. So our first step, we need to organize the data. We're going to put it in order from least to greatest. And this will make the data, the numbers, much easier to work with. So let's start with the least. That looks like it's going to be two and a half. So we have one, two, three turtles that were two and a half inches long. So one, two, three. And since we are working with fourths, we're counting up by a fourth. Next is two and three fourths. We have one turtle that was two and three fourths inches long. Next is three. We have one, two, three, four turtles that were three inches long. So one, two, three, four. Next is three and one fourth. We have one, two turtles that were three and one fourth inches long. And then next is three and a half. We don't have any turtles that were three and a half inches long. So next is three and three fourths. We have one turtle that was three and three fourths inches long. And that looks like that's all of our data, all of the turtles. Let's double check here though that we have everything by counting both of our lists and making sure they match. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven turtles. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So we are good to go and move on. We didn't skip anything or count anything twice. So our data is organized. We have it from least to greatest. Our next step, we need to find the least and greatest number that we are working with. That way we can make a number line that fits what we have. We want all of our numbers to be included. This is a pretty quick step since we have our data in order from least to greatest. Our least is two and a half and our greatest is three and three fourths. So now that we know that, we can move on to the next step. So we have our least and greatest. Our next step, we need to make our number line. We need to include two and a half, up to three and three fourths, and we will count up by a fourth. Now I'm going to start the number line at two and end it at four. So starting and ending with the whole number, and that's going to include all of our data, all of the numbers. But keep in mind, do we have to start and end with the whole number? No, we can start and end at the least and greatest. So for this example, we can start at two and a half and end at three and three fourths. 
and that would be perfectly fine. But I'm going to start at 2 and end at 4, and we will count up by a fourth along the number line. This will include all of our data. So let's start with a line here and our whole numbers. So 2, 3, 4. 2, 3, 4. Now we can include the fourths. And I like doing fourths by splitting the whole numbers in half and then splitting the halves in half. That gives us fourths. So split the whole numbers in half and then split the halves in half. So this is 2 and 1 fourth, 2 and a half, and then 2 and 3 fourths. Next, we have 3 and a fourth, 3 and a half, and 3 and 3 fourths. And that's our number line. And remember, those numbers represent inches, and we're going to label that at the end. So our number line is done. We are ready to move to the next step, where we need to draw the x's. The x's show the number of times each length occurred. Let's start from the least and work our way to the greatest. So we're starting with two and a half. How many turtles had a length of two and a half inches? Well, three. So we need three x's above two and a half. Next, we have two and three fourths, which occurred once. So one turtle was two and three fourths inches long. So we need one x above two and three fourths. Next, we have three, and we have four threes. Four turtles were three inches long. So we need four x's above three. Next, we have three and one fourth, and we have two turtles that were three and one fourth inches long. So we need two x's above three and one fourth. Now going along the number line, next is three and a half. Well, we don't have any turtles that were three and a half inches long. So we move on to three and three fourths. And we have one turtle that was three and three fourths inches long. So we need one x above three and three fourths. And that's all of our x's. Now one thing we can do here after we have our x's is to double check we have the correct amount. We have 11 turtle lengths, so we should have 11 x's. And we do here, so we are good to go. And as far as the x's, notice all of the x's are basically the same size, the stacks of x's are straight, and the x's are lined up, meaning all of the first x's start at the same point and are lined up with each other as we look across. The second x's are lined up with each other as well, so on and so forth. So we are done with that step, drawing the x's. So moving on to our last step, we label and write a title. We know what this line plot is showing us, but for someone else looking at this, the title and label are very important. They help a viewer understand the line plot and the data that is being presented. Let's start with the numbers on the number line. We need to label those. What do those represent? What do they mean? Well, inches. So we need to write inches down here. And then lastly, we need a title that explains what this line plot is about. And there's no one exact correct answer here, but we want something that tells the viewer what the line plot is showing. So let's do baby turtle lengths. Baby turtle lengths. So that's our label and title. And that's our line plot. We are done. So there you have it. There's how to read and understand a line plot, and then also how to create a line plot. I hope that helped. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, peace.